Welcome to the award ceremony for the 2022 Whiting Case International Rounds. My name is Tessa Walker and I'm currently serving as the Interim Executive Director for the International Law Students Association. Today we are here to celebrate the accomplishments of the amazing teams and individuals who took part in the International Rounds. I wish that we were all together in the ballroom of a hotel so that you could bask in the huge round of applause you, you all deserve for your hard work, your dedication, and your incredible performances throughout the competition. As we hand out all the awards today, remember that thousands of friends of the Jessup around the world are cheering for you. When we are finally able to meet in person, I'll make sure that we give a couple of extra congratulatory cheers for all of our 2021 and 2022 virtual competitors. I know that for many people, the Jessup competition is one part of a much bigger dream, one step on a long journey. That may be a dream to work in the field of international law, or perhaps even a dream to one day sit as a judge on the International Court of Justice. Although you are still in the early stages of achieving all your goals and dreams, I want to remind you to set your expectations high. Former Jessup competitors work in almost every field of international law. They lead international law firms, argue in front of international courts and tribunals, and work at leading international organizations and nonprofits. In fact, you met many of these Jessup alumni over the last two weeks as they judged your Jessup rounds. And if you watched the final round yesterday, you also know that two former competitors, Judge Nolte and Judge Charlesworth, now serve on the International Court of Justice. With that in mind, I'll encourage you again to set the bar as high as you can and expect to achieve your goals. Now, I can't promise that achieving these goals will always be easy. In my eight years at ILSA, I have seen far too many Jessup competitors face overwhelming obstacles as they take part in the competition and pursue the study of international law. This year, just days before the Ukrainian national rounds, I watched with the rest of the world as Russia invaded Ukraine. Each day I see in the news the devastation this war causes for the people of Ukraine, including the members and advisors of Ukrainian Jessup teams from Kiev Taras Shevchenko National University and Kiev National Taras Shevchenko University International Relations. Although these students prepared for months to take part in the Jessup competition, they did not have the opportunity to compete at the national rounds or the international rounds. Instead, their lives were turned upside down by war. Ukrainian students should be going to school, hanging out with friends, and joining their fellow Jessup competitors in courtrooms, not hiding in makeshift bomb shelters. The Ukrainian people are suffering incredible and unjust hardships because the Russian government chose to invade a sovereign nation in violation of international law. It is important that we continue to support our friends in Ukraine in any way that we can. This may look different for everyone, but please consider donating to well-vetted, reliable organizations and charities, encountering the spread of misinformation by sharing accurate news and information on all platforms. I also encourage you to reach out to your Ukrainian friends or other friends from that region of the world and ask if there are specific ways that you can help. As students and practitioners of international law, you all understand the significant impact that Russia's actions may have for the future of international law. At the recommendation of Justice Ukraine and with their help, ILSA has organized a panel to explore this topic with leading experts. On May 5th, 2022, we will be joined by professors Dapo Akande, Mikola Nadotovsky, Harold Coe, and Philippa Webb. The panel will be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube, and we will share more information about this event next week. We're also exploring additional opportunities for ILSA and the Jessup community to support the Ukrainian Jessup community in the weeks and months ahead. I want to take a moment to recognize the Jessup spirit demonstrated by the teams that were able to take part in this year's competition. The Jessup spirit is divine, defined as having four attributes, camaraderie, academic excellence, competitiveness, and appreciation of fellow competitors. However, I also like to think there is a fifth element that is not listed, but is equally important, perseverance. Despite the virtual setting, I saw incredible displays of camaraderie, both within teams and between teams. You supported each other through technology challenges, schedule changes, early morning and late night matches and everything in between. Despite the virtual setting, you took the opportunity to meet your fellow competitors and to connect with one another. You exhibited academic excellence in every match where you presented well-researched and well-organized arguments. 
Every time judges returned to the judges room after their matches, they bragged about the excellence of teams they saw and shared some of the most brilliant arguments. After watching matches at all levels of the competition, I have no doubts about your competitiveness. Teams came to the Jessup International Rounds ready to compete from the moment the first timer started until the last second of Sir Rebuttal. You tackled challenging questions without hesitation and impressed the judges with your knowledge of the law and the facts. In my position, I have the privilege of speaking with many teams during the competition, and I've heard many stories of appreciation of your fellow competitors. I heard when you spoke of your opponents with respect and saw your willingness to make accommodations when teams had emergencies or unexpected challenges. And finally, I also want to recognize those teams that persevered. I know that there are dozens of teams around the world that overcame obstacles to compete this year, and in some cases, I haven't heard your story yet. However, I do want to recognize one team that I was fortunate to work with directly. This year, I had the opportunity to assist with the organization of the Sri Lankan National Rounds. As we were preparing for the round, the teams informed me that they were experiencing extended rolling blackouts that affected their ability to compete. However, they remained committed to taking part in the national round, and the team successfully participated in the qualifying competition. As the winning team, University of Colombo prepared for the international rounds, but they continued to experience long periods without electricity and internet. When they received their schedule for the international rounds, they had no idea if they would be able to compete or if their matches would be interrupted by power outages. Fortunately, they not only made it to their matches, but they also moved on to the advanced rounds. Just as they were celebrating their success, massive protests in Sri Lanka led to the declaration of a state of emergency, a curfew, and a social media ban. The team immediately had to regroup and decide how to handle this new set of challenges. They had to obtain special permission from the police to travel to the university for each round, and often didn't know until shortly before their match if they would have the power they needed to compete. Despite all these struggles they faced behind the scenes, their judges and opponents only saw their camaraderie, academic excellence, competitiveness, and appreciation of fellow competitors. Although I know they were exhausted by the end of their time in the competition, they persevered, competed, and excelled. I share this story because I know it will resonate with many Jessup students around the world who continue to face obstacles not only as they take part in the competition, but also as they pursue their studies and make decisions about their future. I hope that all of you will walk away from the competition with the knowledge that you're a part of a global community that believes in your ability to overcome obstacles. As I said before, set the bar high because we really can't wait to watch you succeed. Now, I know you're all eager to move on to the awards, but I have a few people that I really need to thank. Please bear with me because each and every person I mentioned deserves to be recognized for their important contribution to the success of the 2022 White and Case International Rounds. First, I would like to thank the members of the ILSA staff, Chris Bonet and Shannon Hutchins, for their tireless work over the last few months. I appreciate their willingness to work long hours and weekends, to take the 3 a.m. shifts, to make sure that rounds go out on time, and to handle problems that arose with kindness and professionalism. I honestly could not have done any of this without them. I also wanna thank my really awesome team of administrators. With a staff of only three people, I had to have a team of volunteers that I could rely on literally day and night. I wish we could give a huge round of applause to Bob Nabatra, Jeff Brooks, Katie Ellis, Evgeny Menchev, Derek Moore, Meredith Perlman, Michael Pyle, and Salim Yusupo. These wonderful people staff the judges room and competition platform 24 hours a day to make sure that competitors and the competition proceeded smoothly and on time. They did all of this simply because they love the Jessup and want every competitor to have the best possible experience during the competition. I cannot go any further without sharing my gratitude for all of our Jessup Memorial and Oral Round judges. The Jessup competition is only possible because of your willingness to volunteer your time to score memorials and judge oral arguments. This year, hundreds of judges from all around the world made time in their schedules for the Jessup. I hope that all of you had a good experience and will join us again next year. Next, a huge thank you to White and Case, our global partner, for their unwavering support of the Jessup competition at the national and international level. A special thank you to the firm's chair, Hugh Verrier, and to Elizabeth Black, Associate Director of Global Citizenship, who goes above and beyond to assist with the organization of the international rounds. 
I would also like to thank King and Spalding and Baker McKenzie for their ongoing commitment to the Jessup competition. Their support is invaluable. Finally, I want to say thank you to the entire Jessup community. It has been a pleasure to serve as the interim executive director during the 2022 international rounds. I look forward to working with the incoming ex executive director, Michael Pyle, and I am excited for a new era for ILSA and the Jessup competition. Thank you all for making the past two weeks a memorable and unforgettable experience. I hope to see you all next year in person for the 2023 Jessup competition. Again, congratulations to all of the award winners and to all of the teams that took part in the 2022 White and Case International Rounds. And here are the 50 best oralists from the preliminary rounds. At 50, Santiago Perez Para, Team 101, Universidad de los Andes. Also, Keshav Somani, Team 387, Gujarat National Law University. At 48, Edward Dominic Emilio, Team 591, University of San Carlos. Trinu Yogi, Team 457, University of Vienna. At 45, Sophie Cunningham, Team 391, University of Queensland. Gregory Irmeni, Team 321, Etvos Lorand University. Ravid Reef, Team 159, University of Pennsylvania. Coming in at 42nd place is Moon Yao Dai, Team 334, Hong Kong University. Mahin De Silva, Team 144, University of Colombo. Hannah Sweeney, Team 342, Harvard University. At 41, Tibet Sahiri, Team 446, Cook University. At 40, Raul Dazarda, Team 278, Jindal Law School. At 39, Christine Phillips, Team 229, University of Western Ontario. At 37, Maria Rusandra Ruz Boda, Team 651, University of Bucharest. Richard Geek Ransom, Team 374, University of Melbourne. At 36, Lisa Dumke, Team 220, Busarius Law School. At 35, William Garziki, Team 391, University of Queensland. At 30, Lee Ran Oren, Team 285, University of International Business and Economics. Shilpa Kishnan, Team 306, National University of Singapore. Selen Olger, Team 446, Cook University. Also at 30, Axel Sarkissian, Team 159, University of Pennsylvania. Olivier Joseph Claude Clavet, Team 320, Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies. At 28, Elise Manchester, Team 204, Case Western Reserve University. Konstantin Gladivinko, Team 457, University of Vienna. At 24, Brian Wong, Team 102, Singapore Management University. Camilla Isnern, Team 193, New York University. Peter Neal, Team 159, University of Pennsylvania. Martin Portillo Vasquez, Team 101, Universidad de los Andes. At 23, Marta Canary, Team, four, team 342, Harvard University. At 22, Lillian Orion Stewart Robb, Team 320, Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies. At 19, Eli Benin, Team 396, Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Melvinder Singh, Three, team 306, National University of Singapore. Alexander Yen, Team 305, the Honorable Society of Gray's Inn. At 18, Lu Wang, Team 429, China University of Political Science and Law. At 17, Selena Grimes, Team 151, Wayne State University. At 15, Emma Sproutberry, Team 268, Cornell University. Eliza Wilhelm, Team 220, Busarius Law School. At 14, Gerald Tan, Team 306, National University of Singapore. At 13, Clara Lowe, Team 306, National University of Singapore. At 12, 
Krisha Vera Romano Weigel, Team 591, University of San Carlos. At 11, Robbie Tan, Team 102, Singapore Management University. At 10, Adrian Gabriel C. Padilla, Team 427, University of the Philippines. At number 9, Noor Ir Shahadat, Team 159, University of Pennsylvania. At 7, Sandra Bogoda, Team 144, University of Colombo. Kato Shimizu, Team 315, University of Tokyo. At 6, Shinosuke Natsume, Team 315, University of Tokyo. In 5th place, Joseph Na, Team 113, University of Oxford. In 2nd place, Lucia Gary, Team 113, University of Oxford. Wayne Chang, Team 102, Singapore Management University. Daniela Pereira, Team 144, University of Colombo. And first, Bernice Johanna G. De La Cruz, Team 427, University of the Philippines. Here are the 25 best oralists from the advanced rounds. Tied for 24th, Aloysius Francis M. Breshan, Team 427, University of the Philippines. Lu Quan Wang, Team 429, China University of Political Science and Law. At 21, Brian Wong, Team 102, Singapore Management University. Robbie Tan, Team 102, Singapore Management University. Ho Yin Sang, Team 554, Team 544, Chinese University of Hong Kong. At 19, Daniela Pereira, Team 144, University of Colombo. Krisha Ver Romano Weigel, Team 591, University of San Carlos. At 18, Lynn von Engelbrechten, Team 389, Herty School. At 17, Shilpa, Shilpa Krishnan, Team 306, National University of Singapore. At 16, Eliza Wilhelm, Team 220, Bucerius Law School. At 15, Luca Gary, Team 113, University of Oxford. At 14, Yuri Vitamin, Team 389, Herty School. At 11, Vishal Karna, Team 331, University of New South Wales. Will Baker, Team 204, Case Western Reserve University. Trinu Yogi, Team 457, University of Vienna. At 10, Hannah Sweeney, Team 342, Harvard University. At 8, Gerald Tan, Team 306, National University of Singapore. Mohammed Hashem Karim, 389, Herty School. At number 7, Marta Canary, Team 342, Harvard University. At 6, Wen Yi Chang, Team 102, Singapore Management University. At 5, James Stewart, Team 298, University of Georgia. At four, Christopher Hoey Kwan Wai Jin, Team 544, Chinese University of Hong Kong. In third place, Chek Kai Lao, Team 334, Hong Kong University. And tied for first, Elise Manchester, Team 204, Case Western Reserve University. And Courtney Robinson, Team 298, University of Georgia. During the international rounds, we ask teams to create and send in videos that show us what the spirit of the Jessup means to them. We received many wonderful entries which we'd like to share with you throughout these awards. Here is a submission from our third place finalist, Team 285, University of International Business and Economics from China. I had a lot of fun in this process. Great. Long live the Sudan. Long live Professor Hangland.
杰森，哇，好帅哦 ！Great fun in Jason。今天比赛压花戏。It, it is great fun to be one of the、uh, JSO members. Hey, JSO, how are you doing? It is really good to be in JSO, and it is really an rewarding journey. Chat, chat, go, hot chat, go. Either one, one, one here. JSO, 大家好啊，兄弟姐妹啊 ，Hi, it's Ben、well. from Beijing, China, and this is the second year for me participating in JSO. And、um, the whole world is now facing with COVID-19 or maybe COVID-18 in the JSF universe. So it becomes more and more meaningful for us to,、uh, as international students, to learn from this competition and、uh, ultimately bring law and order to this world. So wish to see you all next year in Washington. And now a message from White and Case presenting the Distinguished Jessup Alumni Award. I'm Jackie McLennan, and I'm speaking to you today as head of White and Case's global pro bono practice, and someone who's fortunate to have been involved in the Jessup for many years. This year, again, Jessup has shown its flexibility. We can't meet in person, but we can embrace the virtual Jessup and the wider digital opportunities for discussion and for networking. Let me first congratulate all the student competitors in the Jessup this year. The work you've put in is immense, and you should feel so proud of what you've achieved, particularly in these difficult, challenging times. With all that's happening in the world right now, the skills and the understanding and the respect for the rule of law and the role of international law in particular that you've learned through your Jessup participation is more important than ever. This year, we celebrate the 15th year of White and Case's global partnership with the Jessup. We want to promote the Jessup and all it stands for as widely as possible, because we believe, and I've seen firsthand, that the Jessup is much, much more than a competition. It's a community, and it's made stronger by your participation. It's a community which produces our world's leaders. And as you may know, the Jessup motto says, "Future world leaders will look at each other differently, for they'll have met here first as friends." And right now, we need world leaders who can speak to each other as friends. Last year, we established an annual award to honour a Jessup alumni who's had an impact on the legal profession and the world. Jessup alumni have gone on to very impressive, important careers, truly making a difference across the globe as lawyers, as professors, judges, government officials, politicians, and business leaders. And the purpose of this award is simple: by reminding you, participating in the Jessup today as students, of the great achievements of distinguished members of the Jessup alumni community. We hope to inspire you to achieve great things too. For this award, we look for a leader with vision, with a commitment to international cooperation, the rule of law, and the legal profession. And this year, I'm delighted to announce the recipient of the award is Judge Hilary Charlesworth, member of the International Court of Justice. Judge Charlesworth participated in the Jessup competition. In 1980, as a student at the University of Melbourne, and she stayed connected to the Jessup by coaching teams and judging Jessup rounds since then. You may indeed have seen her in action this year, as we were honoured to have her judging the 2022 Championship round. Judge Charlesworth is a leading scholar and jurist who very quickly established herself as a pioneer in the field. Of feminist international law, and she's made a very significant contribution to the study and practice of international law generally. Judge Charlesworth is the Harrison Moore Professor of Law and Melbourne Laureate Professor at the University of Melbourne, and Distinguished Professor at the Australian National University. 
She's a barrister and solicitor at the Supreme Court of Victoria, and she was elected to the International Court of Justice in November 2021, and she was an ad hoc judge before that. She's been president of the Australia and New Zealand Society of International Law and a member of the Executive Council of both the Asian Society of International Law and the American Society of International Law. She's been twice recognized for her accomplishments by the American Society of International Law, and she's received the award for preeminent contribution to creative scholarship with Christine Chinkin for the seminal book they co-authored, The Boundaries of International Law, A Feminist Analysis. She's also received the Golar Teal Butcher Award together with Professor Chimkin for outstanding contributions to the development or effective realization of international human rights law. In 2021, Judge Charlesworth received the Distinguished Scholar Award from the International Studies Association and a particular pride because this is close to home for me since I'm based in Brussels. Amongst her many recognitions, she's received an honorary doctorate from the University Catholique de Louvain in Belgium. Judge Charlesworth's work also has a practical side. She's worked as a, alongside human rights organizations in ways to implement international human rights standards, and she's played a leading role in the development of the Australian Capital Territories human rights legislation. Throughout her career, Judge Charlesworth has been a valued mentor to many, and she served as an inspiration for those who want to use the law as a means to change the world for the better. When you mention her name, it's immediately greeted by an outpouring of affection and enthusiasm and respect by her students and colleagues alike. Truly, she's a role model for us all. So I'm privileged and very honored to present the White and Case Distinguished Jessup Alumni Award to Judge Hilary Charlesworth. And now we're very pleased to hear from Judge Charlesworth herself. Thank you. I'm very honoured to receive the White and Case Distinguished Alumni Award. The Jessup competition has played a big part in my professional life and it's wonderful to see it grow and inspire new generations of international lawyers. I have to admit that I was a disconsolate law student in the 1970s in Australia, and I struggled to complete my law studies. Back then, the study of law mainly consisted of learning rules without considering their social or political context. It wasn't until I encountered international law in the final year of my law degree that things changed. At last, a subject where law had to be studied in its global political context. On a wave of enthusiasm, I joined two friends to form a Jessup Root team. In those days, only a handful, I think it was just three Australian universities participated, and we ended up being sent to Washington as the Australian team. There wasn't, I have to admit, a lot of competition. In 1980, the competition that year was all about the law of outer space. It was the People's Astral Union, against the Federation of Celestial States. I still recall those state names today. And in those pre-internet days, I recall long hours trying to track down copies of the records of the United Nations General Assembly Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space that were critical uh, to the arguments. Participation in the international Jessup Moot competition in Washington was thrilling, meeting teams from all around the world who had shared interest in the language of international law. I remain in touch with some friends from that time still today. After the competition in those days, the US State Department sponsored all the international participants on a bus tour of the East Coast of the United States. I remember that we went to Boston, to New York, and to Philadelphia from Washington. And uh, we all had a chance to visit various law schools along the way. And it was really that experience that planted the seed of doing graduate study in international law in the United States. And several years later, I was lucky enough to do so. That experience changed my life, both personally and professionally. So I owe a lot to the Jessup competition. More generally, the Jessup, I think, nurtures a community of international lawyers without borders who have a deep interest in the procedure 
and jurisprudence of the International Court of Justice. It's important to remember that the International Court of Justice was created to provide an alternative to armed conflict. At the same time, we have to recognize that the court is limited in what it can do. I'd like to quote my predecessor, my colleague and my friend, the late Judge James Crawford, who once said, and I'm quoting from him here, it's not the function of individual judges in the international court to solve the problems of the world. It's rather to decide individual cases. And James went on, I have whatever influence on the court I'm entitled to have by virtue of the strength of the arguments in the cases. Judge Crawford's observation emphasizes the significance of the craft of developing and framing arguments into international law, skills that the Jessup competition promotes par excellence. So I think that the wider Jessup community can play a significant role in our fractured world by highlighting both the limits and the potential of international law. I'm very proud to be part of this community and I'm really grateful to receive this award. The Alona Evans Award for Best Memorials of the International Rounds is named in honor of the late Professor Evans, the first woman to be elected president of the American Society of International Law and a faithful supporter of the competition. This year's recipients are, in 25th place, Team 320, Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies. Team 380, Gajamata University. Team 159, University of Pennsylvania. Team 422, Universidad del Istmo. In 24th position, Team 548, Pontifica Universidad Católica de Chile. In 22nd place, Team 268, Cornell University. Team 221, Universitas Polita Harapan. In 20th place, Team 108, Shanto University. Team 169, Boston University. In 14th place, Team 388, Central South University. Team 718, University of Virginia. Team 232, University of British Columbia. Team 334, Hong Kong University. Team 254, Universidad de Buenos Aires. Team 122, Centro de Investigación y Docencia Económicas AC. 11th place, Team 312, George Washington University. Team 229, University of Western Ontario. Team 391, University of Queensland. In 10th place, Team 518, Symbiosis Law School, Pune. In 9th place, Team 470, Ivan Yakashvili, Tbilisi State University. In 8th place, Team 398, Westfede Wilhelm Universitat Munster. In seventh place, Team 342, Harvard University. In sixth place, Team 374, University of Melbourne. In fifth place, Team 200, Hidayatullah National Law University. In fourth place, Team 321, Edvos Laurent University. In second place, Team 102, Singapore Management University. And Team 544, Chinese University of Hong Kong. And in first place, Team 387, Gajah Jarat National Law University. Here to present the best applicant memorials at international rounds is Joel Sherrod, author of the 2022 Jessup Compromis. In fifth place, we have Team 422, Universidad del Itzmo. In joint fifth place, we also have Team 370, the Royal University of Law and Economics. In fourth place, Team 278, Jindal Global Law School. In third place, Team 219, Jungnan University of Economics and Law. In second place, Team 544, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And last but not least, in first place, we have Team 652, the University of Oslo. Here to present the best respondent memorials at the international rounds is ILSA program assistant, Shannon Hutchins. In fifth place, team 591, University of San Carlos. Also for fifth place, team 603, Jaglionian University, Krakow. 
in third place, Team 321 at Vos Loran University. Also in third place, Team 159, University of Pennsylvania. In second, Team 254, Universidad de Buenos Aires. In first place, Team 387, Gujarat National Law University. Here is the second place finalist for the King and Spalding Spear of the Joseph Award, Team 617, Dagon University from Myanmar. Hello everyone, this is Team Dagon University representing Myanmar. Uh, let me start off by introducing our member. Our team is made up of three members, respectively. Hello everyone, my name is Shen Tan Ishui Wayne and I'm agent for Villan Kenan of Bavaria. My name is Mia Tengi So, and I'm the agent for the applicant, the Democratic Republic for the entire. It's me, Yelena Nguyen So, uh, I'm an agent of both countries, which is uh, the Republic of Antara and the Philippine Kingdom of Bavaria. Look at our journey. I realized that we were just trying our best to keep walking the path we chose. Well, we have been experiencing bad things since the beginning of 2021. And one of the bad things we have to deal is the electricity cut and the internet shutdown. While competing the moot court virtually, the electricity and the internet was the most important thing for us. So we've got two choices to handle this situation. First, feel devastated and give up. Second, be resilient and keep going. But against all the odds, we decided to keep going. Of course, we keep going. Although we didn't have a chance to study together, our Jesuit bond could overcome all of these difficulties. The battery was only a person love or a generation around. And I would say, uh, participating in Jesuit has changed our perspective on dispute between nations. And I come to realize that to understand international law really well is very important because it is something that keeps the balance between the nations. Thank you, Jezza, for bringing us home in our darkest times. The award for the best overall applicant side goes to Team 113, University of Oxford. And the award for the best overall respondent side goes to Team 591, University of San Carlos. And now, the Baker McKenzie Award for Best New Team. And the best new team is... Team 652, University of Oslo. Here to honor Jack Norton is incoming ILSA Executive Director, Michael Pyle. This is gonna to be tough. Today, I rise to salute our dear departed comrade, Jack Norton. Jack was the spirit of the Jessup. One of the highlights of every Jessup year was the day Judge Norton first arrived from Scotland in the judge's room in Washington. He was loud, he was exuberant, and he was sweet. The calendar might tell us that the international rounds start on Sunday afternoon, but everybody knew that it really started the moment Jack strode in and bellowed, hello again, dear friends. Jack was the heart and soul of any group of Jessupers he was in. He loved the Jessup and he loved anyone who loved the Jessup. He would cause me no end of administrative headaches during a competition as he would hang around for an hour or more after some matches giving advice to the teams that he had just watched. And he would do the same for other judges, dispensing judging advice, career advice, relationship advice, and sometimes just providing a sympathetic ear. Jack was a trailblazer. Over the last two years, we have all been delighted to discover the depth and breadth of the Global Jessup family. With online national and international rounds, we've met new friends from every corner of the globe. But as with most things, Jack beat us there by 20 or 25 years. He judged national rounds on virtually every continent, and he participated annually in off-season Jessup trainings and convocations across the globe. Many, many years ago, Jack started a tradition in the Washington DC Judges Lounge. Judges would always be coming back from their matches with stories about the funny things oralists had said or the funny questions fellow judges had asked. So Jack set up a poster on the wall of the Judges Lounge 
where judges could write the best of the quotes they'd heard in the match they just finished. It was always a highlight to walk over to that wall and to laugh at the foibles, double entendres, and faux pas committed by bench and bar alike. And nobody laughed louder than Jack. At this year's international rounds, I've heard more times than I can count, oh, I wish Jack Norton were here to see this one. Jack's spirit lives on in each of us whom he touched. As I've said before, whatever joy and enthusiasm I exude for the Jessup competition, I inherited from Jack Norton. He was deeply committed to the Jessup as an avenue to infect the world with our love of law. He was an incomparable teaching judge, and he cared deeply about making sure that all of us understood just how important the Jessup is. And he did all of this with a constant eye for the humor and the absurdity of life. We miss you, Jack. This award is named in honor of Stephen M. Schneebaum, an American attorney and scholar who specializes in international dispute resolution and complex litigation. Mr. Schneebaum has filled a critical role in the organization and administration of the Jessup competition for decades. Among other positions, he has served as a compromis author, chairman of the ILSA Board of Directors, Jessup coach, and Jessup judge. The award is presented to national administrators for outstanding service and dedication to the Jessup competition. Serving as the administrator of a national round is not an easy task, especially if it is your first year. This year, one outstanding administrator stepped up at the last minute and took on the organization of a national round without any previous experience. She jumped into the role with enthusiasm, quickly organizing team schedules and judges while learning about a brand new virtual platform. A positive attitude and consistent kindness made working with this administrator a pleasure. I am thrilled to present the 2022 Schneebaum Award to Gabby Barnett for her work organizing the Belgian national rounds. She has promised to return next year and I can't wait to work with her again. Congrats, Gabby. The Pamela M. Young Award was created in 1993 in honor of Pamela Young, Assistant Jessup Administrator from 1974 to 1994. This award recognizes the outstanding volunteer service of individuals to the Jessup competition. I had an incredible team of volunteers this year and they all deserve recognition. However, one person took on a truly monumental task, judge coordination. This is one of the most pivotal roles of the international rounds and involves hours and hours of hard work, both before and during the competition. To successfully coordinate more than 300 judges for a two week virtual competition, you must be organized, patient, immune to stress and able to convert time zones on command. It may seem impossible that one person could meet all of these requirements, but fortunately, Derek Moore stepped into the role and exceeded all expectations. Although we had some big shoes to fill after our longtime judge coordinator, Rusty Dolphra, stepped down, I never doubted his ability to do the job. I enjoyed working with Derek for the past several months and hope I can convince him to return as the judge coordinator again next year. Thank you, Derek, for all you did to make this competition a success. You deserve the 2022 Pamela M. Young Award and much more. The winner of the King and Spalding Spirit of the Jessup Award is Team 263, Westminster International University in Tashkent. Here is their entry. Lower your expectation, you will be just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs>
20 minutes later. Eternity later. Here are the teams finishing in the round of 32 at the Jessup 2022 White and Case International Rounds. American University, Washington College of Law, USA. Lucerius Law School, Germany. Case Western Reserve University, USA. Cornell University, USA. East China University of Political Science and Law, China. George Washington University, USA. Jindal Global Law School, India. National University of Singapore, Singapore. Shantou University, China. Symbiosis Law School, Pune, India. Universidad de Buenos Aires, Argentina. Universitas Catalic para Hayangan, Indonesia. University of International Business and Economics, China. University of Virginia, USA. Wachwilsche Wilhelm Universität Munster, Germany. Zhongyan University of Economics and Law. And now here are the teams finishing in the octafinals. At Vosloran University, Hungary. Gujarat National Law University, India. Universidad Vienna, Austria. University of Georgia, USA. University of Oxford, United Kingdom. University of San Carlos, Philippines. University of the Philippines, Philippines. WB National University of Juridical Sciences, India. And here are the teams finishing in the quarterfinals. Perte School, Germany. University of New South Wales, Australia. University of Queensland, Australia. University of Western Ontario, Canada. And here are the teams finishing in the semifinals. Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico, UNAM, Mexico. Universidad de Sao Paulo, Brazil. And the finalist of the Jessup 2022 White and Case International Rounds is Singapore Management University, Singapore. And the best oralist from the championship round is Marta Canary, Team 342, Harvard University, United States. And the Jessup 2022 champions are Team 342, Harvard University, USA. Congratulations. On behalf of the entire team at ILSA, I would like to thank all of the students, coaches, administrators, judges, sponsors, and volunteers who make the Jessup possible every year. We can't wait to see